The soprano Raquel Suarez Grown, who sings the role of mother in Toledo Opera's upcoming production of Ragtime. Good afternoon, and I have three different, uh, four different people actually here, and five if you count Kevin, right? Uh, Kevin is uh, a companist for the singers that we have today. Raquel Suarez Grown, who joined us on the podcast a while back. People can still find that podcast online at our website, wgte.org, talking all about ragtime. And we also have another singer, Derek Davis, who sings the role of Cole House Walker Jr. 
Welcome to uh, both of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) And we also have the director, Jim Norman, who is here, as well as the conductor, J. Ernest Green. May I call you Ernie? Please, please. Okay. And uh, Kevin Bilsma is going to be playing for our singers today. Well, Ragtime is happening April 19th and 21st. It's Friday, April 19th at 7.30 p.m. And Sunday, April 21st at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can find out more information at ToledoOpera.org or you can call their box office 419-255-7464 or SING, which is, we talked about that briefly last time. And I should mention that Toledo Opera is a sponsor of programs on WGTE. So, Raquel, tell us about the the aria that you sang as mother. First of all, maybe you should talk a little bit about who, what you represent, right? Yes. So Mother in the show really <laughs> represents change. Um, she is from the upper class family in New Rochelle, and um, she ends up taking in um, a baby and the mother, who are both black, and the husband is very much the opposite of me. He is the example of staying static. He wants everything as it was before. Um, And the mother uh, is very open-minded and she's, I think for that time, also very progressive in her way of thinking. Um, And so in this song of Back to Before, he literally says right before I sing, don't worry, mother, everything will go back to what it was like before. And she knows that it can never happen again and that their relationship Mm -hmm. really can't continue um, because she's grown as a person, and he has not. Yeah. So it's a very powerful, powerful song. Yeah, and definitely hearing you singing it, it, it brings out a lot, I think. Yeah. And demands a lot of the singer as well. Well, speaking of singers, we also have Derek Davis with us, who plays the role of Cole House Walker Jr. I wonder if you could uh, follow Raquel's lead and talk a little bit about what you represent in this show. Yes, so Cole House, he represents the black community in specifically in the United States and more specifically in New York. Um, And the journey that he takes through the show brings him to a space where it exemplifies the, the pain and the struggle and the anger and the frustration that resides in the black community, but the show is so brilliantly written because it starts you off showing his humanity and how the things that he's faced with and the things that he encounters lead him to becoming this, from the outside looking in, angry, frustrated, um, and visceral individual. But at the core of it, he's really fighting for uh, the world to be able to recognize and respect the fact that he's just a human being just like everyone else. Yeah. Uh, have you sung this role before? You Once before I did, yes. Yeah, yes. so you're, you're familiar with it, I obviously. Am. I am. Both as a singer and as a uh, consumer, I imagine. Indeed, for sure. Uh, the one family that we don't have here, this is really about a trio of families, right? And and the Jewish family is represented by a different singer who's not here this morning, although I understand he will be at rehearsal today. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> I hope uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, uh, Jim, you can talk a little bit about uh, the Jewish family, what they sure, represent. Sure. Uh, they're immigrants from Latvia, which is over there in Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. And uh, they come in through Ellis Island, so we get to experience that. And he has brought his little girl, and the mother has died. So he is a father, you know, taking care of this little girl in a new land who, you know, they look at prosperity. And in the Lower East Side tenements of New York, that was not the case. And he finds that it's much more a struggle for him because of the um, not only racial problems, but the religious uh, backlash that uh, his his groups uh, faced, especially back then in in the... early 1900s in New York, which is, you know, based on history. So he finds that it's not, you know, the the American dream when he first gets here. And through the second act, we find that maybe he comes into something just, you know, kind of being the American dream comes to him by hard work and and sticking with it. And he wants to make a life, a good life for his daughter. Yeah. James Norman, who is uh, directing the show, talking there. Uh, I want to turn it over to Ernie Green, who is the conductor of the program today. 
Um, Ernie, have you done this show many times before? I have never done. This is my first ragtime. Wow, your very first. My very first. So with the singers sitting here in the room, (laughs) what is the state of the singing? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to ask you guys to cover your ears, right? I'll (laughs) turn your microphone We're going to use the silent button. Oh, we hear you. We (laughs) hear you. Wow. Yeah. How's it been going? It is. This is a dream cast, flat out, from beginning to end. Yeah. I mean there's just it's it we were at re- we were in rehearsal yesterday and literally as we worked through something I thought okay that's really you know we really kind of nailed it and then we did it again and it was better. Mm. And then we did it again and it was better. These the two that you just heard um Raquel and Derek are both just extraordinary. And what and the emotional depth that they bring to the music is something you know? There, there are lots of and Jim and I talked about this. I've talked about this many times. There are lots of great singers out there, but when you find people that bring that emotional depth to what they're doing, it is it is like lightning. Yeah, and it's it's really extraordinary. Well, it, it's demanding singing, very demanding. Oh my singing. gosh! It, th- this this whole everything about there's nothing about this show that's not demanding. It yeah. is um, it is no romp in the park. That's for sure. Well, I think that uh, Toledo Opera is certainly up for the challenge. Absolutely, agree? Yeah. absolutely. Yes, we've uh, these singers, especially, and the whole cast. The the emotional depth, as Ernie was talking about, it's just the whole package. Yeah, and uh, we're doing this on a on a quicker schedule than we would normally put together a, an opera, and. Um, They've come in and just hit it out of the park, and and it's been a lot of fun just to kind of toy. We've only had two rehearsals, and we've already gotten all the way through Act One, so we get to uh, toy a little more as we go. So uh, it's going to be really special. Well, we have had some of the main singers from Ragtime here, but it's a big cast, right? It is a huge cast. We have 45 in the ensemble, which also encompasses a lot of the little speaking parts of a conductor, a reporter, a town bureaucrat. Not, not this conductor. No, not that conductor. <laughs> Everyone says, really, there's a conductor? It's a train conductor, believe okay. it or not. Yes. Um, no I baton, I had no baton needed. I thought I had lines when I saw a conductor. <laughs> no. So it is a, an ensemble of 45, and then there are another 15 or 16, I can't remember off the top of my head, of main parts that, that come in and out. So, and, a, and an orchestra of 28, which I think um, uh, Bernard Dotson, who's playing Booker T. Washington, who was in the original ensemble in 1998 of Ragtime, was his first Broadway show, he said, wow, I don't think we even had that many in our in our Broadway pit. So, yeah. uh, Ernie and I, we had the orchestra rehearsal the other night, and it's going to sound lush with that many pieces. You're giving it the full operatic treatment. We are giving it the full operatic treatment. Yeah. So let's talk about the arias that you guys are singing today. Raquel, we already heard you sing back to before. And Derek, you're going to sing your aria, Make Them Hear You. Uh, These are both from the same act. When do they occur in the show? My song um, is in the second act. So it's almost towards the end of of the show where she really has grown into a different woman who stands up for herself and... Mother has the biggest arc, character arc, yes. and development of all of the characters, and you see her change the most. Yeah. Well, it, it also has lots of different, you know, moods and emotions that are expressed, and those are in the music, right, I would assume, as well as your singing. Um, does that occur before or after, Derek? You see, I'm betraying the fact that I don't know ragtime it's nearly fine. as so well as you we guys. Get, we get uh, Mother's... I would say epiphany Mm -hmm. Um, and then a couple scenes later Derek has because of a a death of his um, beloved Sarah he goes on a rampage through New York and New Rochelle and um, kills a few people and burns a few things (laughs) down Um, and you know he's he's trying to to come together with his his rage and he takes the Morgan Library, which is an actual place in New York City on Madison Avenue, um, takes it hostage and all of the precious things that are in there that J.P. Morgan is not happy to have him in there. Mm-hmm. And um, he gathers his Cole House's men, as they're called, his, his group. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they try to get him. It's a hostage negotiation. And he... Because he is a human and has empathy, he doesn't want anything to be harmed with his men. 
he's willing to give up himself. So uh-huh. he t- sings this song, Make Them Hear You, which pretty much ends the show except for the epilogue, which this ragtime, and it's interesting, We in rehearsal yesterday, great actresses and actresses are, are looking at each other because they're supposed to relate, but there are lines that are just given and we break the fourth wall to tell the story. Mm. So it's very presentational, and the epilogue is that. So what happened to Father? Well, he was on the Lusitania when it was torpedoed. He's dead. You know, and you go through all the different... Emma Goldman, the anarchist, was, you know, arrested again, and this time, yep, she was deported. So that (laughs) happens, but Derek's song is the last character song in the piece before this epilogue. Well, I understand that you have like a parental guidance kind of uh, warning. Because of language, This we're rating this PG-13 because there is, and it's something that um, Kevin Bilsma, uh, my co-artistic director, and Suzanne Rourke, our executive director, when we decided to do this, I said, we can only do this show if we do the, what I would call disturbing language that's in it because it's a crux in the show. If you don't do it, the show doesn't really mean much. So right. um, it is it is something that I would hope that the audience will struggle with, that it'll make their hair and the back of their neck stand up and go, mm, I, mm, I'm uncomfortable with that. That's the reason for it. Yeah. And I think for different time periods and different generations, that has been expressed through art and even through opera. I mean, Absolutely. opera has murder and all those things in it. It maybe doesn't have the, the exact language Correct. that you're talking but about. But the themes are there. Your Don Giovanni's and, and things like that, the themes yeah. are there. So it definitely is something that people can latch on to, and, and as well as the music. Uh, this is like the your eleven o'clock aria, is that we would say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah I learned that last time when we did the podcast. <laughs> I learned that from James Norman. The we don't call o'clock it the eleven o'clock aria on Broadway. It's the eleven o'clock number. number. Oh, 11 yeah. o'clock number. <laughs> yeah. Yes. See, I have a background in opera. Uh, we so know. Everything is an <laughs> aria to me. <laughs> okay. Well, let's hear you sing, Derek. Uh, this is uh, you singing as Cole House Walker Jr. You're singing the song Make Them Hear You. Kevin Bilsma at the piano here on FM 91. <laughs> Go out and tell our story, let it echo far and wide, make them hear you, make them hear you. How justice was our battle, and how justice was denied, make them hear Say to those who blame us for the way we chose to fight that sometimes there are battles that are more than black or white. And I could not put down my sword when justice was my right. Make them hear you. Tell our story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we were not the only ones. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. sermon or the power of the pen. Teach every child to raise his voice and then my brothers then. Will justice be demanded by ten million righteous men? That's 
baritone Derek Davis performing the role of Cole House Walker Jr. It's from Ragtime from Toledo Opera. He sang Make Them Hear You, his uh, 11 o'clock number that's <laughs> happening at the Toledo Opera. It's happening Friday, April 19th at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, April 21st at 2 p.m. You can find more information at ToledoOpera.org or call them up, 419-255-7464. That's 419-255-SING. And Toledo Opera is a sponsor of programs on WGTE. As I understand it, uh, Jim, tickets are going fast. So Tickets are going very quickly. We're very yeah. pleased, and I think that we did this not only for the show, but because we can uh, get a, a new audience into the opera that maybe is more into musical theater, maybe they'll come to the opera and see the production values and yeah. the type of talent that we, we bring in, and they'll go, oh, maybe I'll try an opera. And, and they'll see, I think, that they're not that far apart from each they other. They really aren't. They yeah. really are not. Um, because we've taken some of the underscoring out, um, just that doesn't work when you don't have scene changes going on. Um, but this is really just played through. Every number, if you look at the music, it says seg and one, seg and one. So, you know, the orchestra doesn't get much of a break. So it's yeah. pretty much like an opera. Uh, Derek, you were here for I Dream yes. several years ago. That was your introduction to Toledo? It was. It was yeah. my first time here. So how do you feel now coming back to uh, Toledo? Oh, I was so excited to come back. I mean, everything here is just done so incredibly excellently. Um, I've been all over the country and all around the world, and I've, I've performed with the best and the worst. And so when the best gives you an opportunity to come back, you jump. Yeah. What about you, Raquel? Have you been in this part of the country before? I have never been in this part of the country. <laughs> this is my first time. Um, and I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, you know, it, it, I agree with Derek that, um, you know, we've all performed with with all sorts of different companies, um, good or bad. And I have to say, from the moment that we started rehearsal, you know, and we heard the chorus and the ensemble, I was like, oh, my God. And then the you know, the, the principals opened their mouth and, you know, working with our wonderful conductor and, and, and Jim's direction. I mean, it really is first class and I'm really grateful to be here. Well, and I have to say that Toledo Opera is lucky to have especially these two because Derek is currently on the national tour of company. So he was able, we were able to get him an out for that contract for two weeks. So he's skipping two cities. Sorry, company. But we have him. <laughs> and Raquel just came off of, uh, of Carlotta on Broadway in Phantom of the Opera, which yeah. I think I can say that yes. in June she will go to Asia and start the international tour of Phantom as Carlotta. So wow. we are very lucky to have this kind of talent come to Toledo Opera. I, I was offered a uh, contract for the touring production of Phantom years ago, years ago, decades ago. And I had an agent who had gotten me a lot of opera gigs, and so I had to give up one or the other. And I went with the opera. So... I probably should have gone with the Broadway, the Broadway yeah. world. <laughs> well, it's out. It. <laughs> and Derek did the national tour of Phantom as the Phantom, so wow. I, that's where I first saw him. And we yeah. performed here, I yes. believe, as well. Yeah, at yeah. the Stranahan. Because I remember looking at him, because he's always, the Phantom's always in his tails, and yeah. I'm like, that man has the longest fingers I have ever <laughs> seen. And I was just, because the Phantom uses his <laughs> yeah, hands so yeah. much, I was just mesmerized. And they are. Very large fingers. Yeah. It, it, it <laughs> doesn't hurt that he's, you know, seven foot tall. Ex well, then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Derek Davis, who's singing the role of Cool House Walker Jr., and Raquel Suarez Grone, who's singing the role of the mother, also the director and artistic director of Toledo Opera, soon to be uh, the head honcho. At General Toledo director, Opera. yes. Woo! Yeah, soon to be head honcho, James Norman. We also have Kevin Bilsma playing piano for us. Kevin will be the incoming artistic director. Correct, yes. After Suzanne retires. This is happening uh, April 19th at 7.30 p.m. That's a Friday night. And Sunday, April 21st at 2 o'clock p.m., and that is a matinee. You can find more information and get your tickets at ToledoOpera.org or call up the box office, 419-255-7464. And Toledo Opera is a sponsor of programs on WGTE. Now, I don't want you to think, uh, <laughs> Ernie, oh. that I forgot you because I didn't mention you before. But do you have any last words for us? I think 
if you are able to get to see this production, you should do it. This is this is kind of a once in a lifetime uh, event to, yeah. my, to my mind. I mean, I, I, uh, I, it is a show that that every single day that I have that I work on it just blows my mind. It yeah. is absolutely extraordinary. So you should go see it. And a production like this does not happen very often. Uh, you say a once in a lifetime event. It's like the eclipse. It <laughs> is. It is. And we actually started rehearsing just after the eclipse. We did. Yeah. Several yeah. hours after the eclipse. <laughs> That's magical. Well, thanks to all of you for joining me today and talking about this great performance. Toy, 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 break a leg, whatever they say in, on Broadway. That's what they say. Okay. Then then we're good. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.